It's kind of an extraordinary time right now in terms of the recognition of the disability and overwhelming burden in the world due to mental disorders. In terms of the need, there's been no time where there's been greater pull. It's also an extraordinary time because of the science. Stanford is a highly innovative place. First, it sits in Silicon Valley, but the medical school sits on the university campus, which has very active research in neurosciences and biological sciences and in bioengineering. So the interactions and the interplay amongst investigators is, is very strong and easy to, in fact, capitalize on. There's really a wonderful atmosphere of collaboration uh, we work actively with engineers, uh, neurosurgeons, uh, neurologists uh, in order to try to advance the field of psychiatry. We're thinking about new novel practices to help patients every single day. We're constantly trying to push the envelope and that takes a collaboration between researchers and clinicians and community stakeholders. Our department is unusual because we really look at five missions and the five missions are advancing science, clinical innovation and service, educational excellence, community engagement, and leadership and professionalism. And the idea is that if you combine these five different missions, responsibly, creatively, thoughtfully, that it goes from being missioned to a methodology for transformational change. Our field is challenged by the limited workforce and increased demand. Places like Stanford where you can really come up with instrumentation and methods that can deal with those problems are very helpful. For example, in my laboratory, we are creating an online training protocol for therapists that treat children that experience trauma. The field of neuroscience has um, really changed what we know about the brain. Um, the next phase of research and science is what does that mean for behavior and how does that relate to individuals individually and uniquely. And so what we're really learning about is the areas of the brain that are impacted and affected by trauma and stress and how does that relate to behavior, emotions, um, mental health. I think the thing I love most about our department is the sense of humility that my colleagues have. We all feel like our lives are touched by mental illness, um, whether it's personally or professionally um, or in our world. We see the impact of mental disorders and we have a sense of humility about that. But it also calls us to do this great work. I specialize in autism treatment. My specialty and research focus is in interventional psychiatry. Our collaborative group here has the uh been really embarking on trying to understand the mechanisms of action of ketamine. I think when the department talks about research and thinks about research, they are thinking about um, innovative science developments. Our program is looking at science that's already been created and focusing that science for legal arguments in advocacy. My clinical role is uh, working with survivors of human rights violations. Uh, so I work with a pretty significant immigrant population from around the world, and I'm the medical director of the Center for Survivors of Torture in San Jose. And that's a place where I practice and then also host um, trainees like residents to, to practice. Many of the people who come here, they come because they want to teach. They may do their scientific work, they may do their clinical work, they feel like they're making a difference there, but how they feel like they'll change the future is by bringing forward young people who are such extraordinary scientists, educators, policy makers. They go in lots of different directions. I think that's very inspiring for us. It's a great time to become part of academic medicine. We need people who are different. We need diversity of thought, experience, perspective, and we need that if we're going to solve the complex problems that are in front of us. We really live this idea of respecting and valuing all people, and you see it in every way. You see it in the patients that we serve, you see it in the learners that we bring to our programs, you see it in our faculty and in our leadership. It's one thing to know 
what you're supposed to do, and it's another thing to know how to do it, how to get there. And I think a strength of our department is that we actually give people the blueprint on how do you get to where you want to go in terms of being successful in your career. For me, it's an incredible time to be leading a major department of psychiatry with the kinds of resources and creativity that we have because it's the first time I've ever seen such profound appreciation of the need and the disease burden associated with mental disorders, not just in our communities, but in our world. And then the incredible science where we're really having extraordinary new understanding of these disorders, not just as nature or nurture, but nature, nurture, and neighborhood come together. We are here to create a better future. That is the fundamental responsibility of academic medicine, and that's what my colleagues love and are drawn to here.